Hey guys, um, so you're you're probably here today because you want to know how to start um, how to start the RabbitMQ server, which is um, it's, it's basically the broker. It's the RabbitMQ broker. So um, we're we're going to show you how to do that. Now I've actually already covered this in the installation video. So if you haven't seen that, you might want to go check that out. Um, that should be already published by the time I publish this video. Um, but in any case, I'm going to cover that individually in this video. And um, I, I went into a few other things with that also. So let me actually zoom in on this page. This is the guide I wrote for this. Um, actually, let me switch over to, and here we go. Let's zoom in. Let's see if that's, yeah, that's right about there. Yeah, that's probably right. The, hopefully you can see that. Um, hopefully that's big enough so you can see it on your screen for the video. Um, so let's see here. To uh, start the server, it's pretty easy. Um, you're basically well assuming you installed it using um, using the repos it's probably just going to be a service uh, a service on your system so you can just say um, and you're, you're probably going to need sudo to start it so sudo service rabbit MQ server start will start it and then um, uh, so so yeah actually in this this uh, snippet up here I put two commands so um, this this first command is what you'd use if you had installed it using a uh, using the repo and you just did like an apt install rabbitmq um, and, and we cover installing that in a separate video also but any anyways if you had installed it manually and you, you just want to use the command to start and stop it um, which will probably work if you just don't if you have it shut down and you don't feel like using the service but to manually start it you would use this command you would um, you'd say rabbitmq dash server dash detached so um, yeah if you're Ooh, um, yeah, so one of these, basically, I put the quick answer for this to start RabbitMQ. Try running either of these two commands. Now, the second command, you're going to want to make sure it's on your path. Otherwise, you're going to run it. You're going to want to run this RabbitMQ server command from wherever you happen to install RabbitMQ. And this is assuming you ran it. You installed it manually. The second command would be useful if you just like unpacked it and ran, installed it manually on your system, which I covered how to do that. But um, if you installed it the easy way from the, the repo, then um, you, you're probably going to run a command like this. Now, notice the second command I didn't put, the, I didn't use sudo. That's assuming you're just running it as your own user or whatever user you're logged in. You might want to create a RabbitMQ user. You might just want to run it on your, as yourself for development purposes, however you want to do it. We're assuming you have access to that user and you're just running as that user. But, um, you know, if you had installed it, uh, using root access using the package it's probably gonna you're probably gonna use sudo so anyways um, so if you had installed from the basically if you had installed from the package using the repo um, you can use the service commands normally and um, I'm, I'm assuming in this case that you're running this probably isn't too different for other distros but I'm assuming you're just running Debian or Ubuntu I tested this out on Ubuntu so I'm, I'm just you know this is a uh, Linux centric and Ubuntu slash Debian centric uh, information, but um, it, it's not too far. Off. It's it's going to be a bit different if you're on on Mac OS or Windows, and I, I haven't specifically covered those here. And some of these things may be a tiny bit different if you're on Red Hat. Any anyways, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can just run the service command the same way. This might be completely transparent. But yeah, so if you if you installed from the uh, from the package from the repo, you can basically just run sudo service rabbitmq server start uh, start to start it, stop to stop it, and status to check the status. So um, I, and you, you you probably noticed I have a terminal open in this other window. Um, it's zoomed in really far, so um, all the text doesn't uh, display on one line. Um, like like my display is a. Uh, it, it's relatively high resolution, high enough that it kind of, uh, it, it's, it, it would be hard to see on a YouTube video, I think. So for most people watching it, I just zoomed in a whole bunch. So you could, you could probably tell what's going on. Hopefully, even if you're watching this on a mobile device, but, um, in, anyways, I'm, 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 I'm going to demo this over here. I'm not going to actually demo these, these commands right here because that's not how I installed it. So I actually installed it manually and, um, and again, I like I went over this in my other video. I showed how to do this, but um, so I installed it manually, so I have it under my control, not root. I, I mean, I still have root access because it's my own desktop I'm running this on, but um, I I'm starting and stopping this as myself. So I'm logged in as user one, 
and I don't even have to switch to root or use sudo or anything. I'm just directly running as user one, and I have it installed in my home directory and a subdirectory in my home directory. But you can just, so basically I can just run these commands, rabbitmq server and uh, rabbitmq ctl. And um, since I have the, the, the path to the sbin directory for rabbitmq on my path, um, I can just run those commands from anywhere without having, sp having to specify the full path. So um, let's see here. So you can run it in the foreground with this. Um, not a whole lot of, you, you know, we probably should do that just to cover it. Uh, I believe I have it running right now. Let, let, let's verify that. So if you can run status and um, let's see. Yeah, so I had scroll up to the top here. This is a little bit easier to see when I'm not zoomed in really far. But uh, it says status of the node is, yeah, so it's, it's, it's up and running. So we're going to want to shut this down. So let's see. Yeah, so we have, uh, you can run it in the foreground. You can run it detached. It's basically as a service. If you want it to be run, ran as a service, you just say dash detached. So these are the two startup commands. And this is the shutdown command. The stop command is the same thing as the shutdown command. Um, and the status command just describes the status. So anyways, uh, let, let, let's run um, shutdown. And then we're going to run status again just to verify that it's down. So shut it down like that. Waiting for it to terminate. And there we go. It's shut down. Successfully shut down. So let's just check the status just to see. And some more scrolling up. And there we go. So it's, when you check status, it gives us an error. So we know it's down. So um, let's say if we want to start it back up again, we can run. Uh, so let's start it in the foreground just because, you know, this is pretty much... The, the entire purpose of this video is to show uh, show you how to start it, so I may as well go into that much depth showing you how to do it. So you may as well uh, just get a demo of what it looks like running it. So um, let's see. Yep. Paste this command in here, and I'm having copy-paste trouble today. There we go. All right, so run it in the foreground like this. And it's just, it, it gives you, I mean, it works. Gives you some some output, a bunch of boring things. Tells you what version it is, and, and so on and so forth. And it says starting broker completed with three plugins. So that basically means we're up and running. So RabbitMQ is running now, but it's in the foreground. So if I kill this terminal, um, RabbitMQ should also go down. And um, probably I haven't tried that. Um, anyways, I'm going to. There we go. Um, and let's just run status real quick. Whoops. Yeah, so kill it. Now we can run status. And it's going to tell us that it's down. So there we go. So that's running in the foreground. Basically, once you hit control C and kill it, it's it's down. And if we had closed this terminal, it would also probably die. So um you can run it with rabbitmq server dash detached. And basically that returns nothing. Like you see there, see how I just ran that command and it gave you no output at all. So it, it almost makes you feel like it didn't do anything at all. Like you, you wonder if it even worked. But if you check uh, rabbitmq ctl status, um, look at the top here, you'll, you'll notice it gave you a lot of output. And see there, there's our our startup command with no output and here's us running the status command and it's it looks like it's up and running it doesn't say error or anything it gives us a bunch of stats it tells us like the os um uptime and a bunch of little uh like like um tells us the data directory config files log files how much memory uses all, all sockets file descriptors that kind of stuff so a, a lot of stats and bits of information about it um so that's all fine and great. So basically we've covered starting in the foreground, starting in the background, shutting it down, checking the status. So the one other thing on this page that I wanted to cover, I pro I've spent way too much time covering this one, two thing. This is or, um, th this one specific thing. This is probably more time than anyone who looked this up wanted to spend watching it. If you've watched this to this point, um, um, that that's um, ho hopefully you enjoyed watching this and found it useful. Hopefully you got something out of it. Um, 
but probably you you got your answer in the first 30 seconds of this video I, anyways um but hope hopefully somebody finds the rest of this useful but the last thing i wanted to cover is uh th this snippet down here you might be wondering what this is this is if you wanted to uh set it up to use system d so if you want to create your own system d service you can do it like this now if you had installed using the package from the repo most likely it's going to set up system d for you so you're going to have a service and it's you're not going to have to worry about this but if you installed it manually yourself you can create your own system d service um i did now this this uh example configuration here is uh not complete yet so um, if you copy and paste this in, it's probably not going to work for you. I, this is going to need some tweaking before it's completely working, but I wanted to post this up here anyways for the time being. So um, just beware, it will probably need some modification if you want to run it on your system. So um, yeah, it does a few things. I, I should probably talk about what's in this. So we, we basically create a unit, set the description to RabbitMQ, um, starts up after the network comes up. Um, what else? Bun bunch of standard stuff here. We set the path so you can set environment variables like this. So if you, if you want your, uh, your service to run with certain environment variables set, which you'll need to do, um, you, you can just assign whatever variables to this environment variable in the config file, and that's going to be set up in your environment. So we can set path to EB equal, um, no, no, this isn't actually bash, but um, it, it, it's, it's just a sy special syntax for this config file. But you can set, um, basically add something to path like this. Um, so we're here we're adding user bin. Then we're adding the, the uh, bin directory for Erlang. And we're adding rabbitmq home. And then we, I actually used the full path. I could have set this as a, a variable also, I, I prob maybe I should have, but anyways, just specify the exact start. This is the, the what's going to get run when it does start up. So we're starting rabbit, rabbitmq server dash detached. And that should start up rabbitmq. And um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, wanted by multi-user target. So yeah, yeah, basically a pretty simple standard uh, systemd service. And so that's probably more than you really wanted to know about uh, how to start the rabbitmq server. Um, if you want more details about RabbitMQ, you can check our other documents and uh, some more, we, we've done some other videos on it and I, I put a few documents up on it so far. You'll probably want to check those out. But um, hopefully you found this interesting. Um, give us a thumbs up. Um, leave a comment down below if you have any questions, criticisms, comments, anything you want to say. We want to hear what you, what you think. Um, <clears throat> If you want to see more videos like this, you're probably going to want to subscribe. And you, you might want to hit the little bell icon so you get a, an alert when we put out a new video. Um, we have a lot of great stuff coming up, um, not just RabbitMQ related stuff. We're going to be covering like anything related to programming servers, um, computer hardware, 3D printing, single board computers like Raspberry Pis and stuff, electronics. Um, we'll, we'll be covering a lot of server related stuff and um, we, we do have some more RabbitMQ stuff um, in the works. It's going to be coming out soon. Um, and at the time of this video being published, we'll probably have a few of those out already. Um, almost definitely the installation a video showing you how to install it. But um, yeah, so you're, you're going to want to stay tuned for that. And hopefully you found this video useful. Um, ho hopefully you enjoyed watching this. So um, that's pretty much it for today. So as always, um, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it.